Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited to have you with us today because we're going to be talking with Sarah Suarez um, about building your nonprofit growth, exposure, everything via social media. And this is a really big topic because uh, Sarah, we talk about this so often. People get confounded by it. They know they need it, but they're not sure why. They don't know how. And so you're going to help us to kind of understand this so that we can be um, more proactive and in realizing how to use this tool. So CEO of The Social Puzzle, I'm super excited to learn from you today, Sarah. But before we get going, I just want to remind everyone, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd herself, is out of town. I believe she's working in the Northwest today, and she'll be back with us um, shortly. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, is the CEO of The Raven Group. Um, I like to call her my personal nonprofit nerd. Hey, we also have some amazing folks that nerd out with us day in and day out, and those are our presenting sponsors. And they include our friends at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in, day out, rain or shine, all times of the year, and they help support us so that we can bring the nonprofit show to you. What's really cool, and, and I was talking with Sarah about this, is that we have now a new app, and I want to thank our team um, here at the American Nonprofit Academy. It's really super cool. You can take a quick screenshot of this uh, graphic if you're watching us via our streaming or live, and then that will plug you into everything that we're doing each and every day. It's It's really a cool way to see what we're engaging with and how we might be able to help you with some content. Um, as you know, with nearly 800 episodes, there's a lot that we have covered and will continue to cover. And this can be one of those fun things that helps you navigate all that information. You can also, of course, find us on any of our streaming platforms as well as our podcast. So download um, The Nonprofit Show wherever you like to get your content. Okay, Sarah, whew, you ready to go, my friend? I am. I'm ready. You know, I love the name of your business because if ever there was one word for us to associate with social media, it's got to be the word puzzle. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's and, it's, a great word. And, and I actually chose it because I wanted my business to be named something that made me happy. And, uh, my Nana was a huge puzzler. So it just, every time I say it, it, it makes me think of her. So it, it makes me happy, but it also works in terms of the puzzle that social media is right now. It is. And you know, um, the thing about it is that it's, it's always changing and there are always new and different opportunities. And so um, it's like one of those puzzles that you can't really finish. You just need to kind of think about the next level of play and uh, I love 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 your approach to this I think just by looking at the name of your business it gives me a lot more um, confidence in that you know what you're talking about and how to think about this in a strategic uh, overview and so let's start with that because I'm fascinated by this concept of having a social media strategy. Tell us what that looks like. So that is going to be based on a few things, but primarily you need to know what your organization wants to achieve through having a social media presence. And then also you want to know who your audience is, because if you don't know who you're speaking to, you don't know what channel is the best channel for you to be on and you are speaking too broadly to really attract those who might be really drawn to your mission. So once you understand those, you create a strategy for your content and measurable goals for each piece of that content. And you look back at the analytics every month and make tweaks accordingly. So it's really a roadmap to achieve those goals that you set out in the beginning. You said something really interesting, and I want to follow up with you on this. 
it almost seems to me like, and maybe I misheard this, but you need to be thinking about who you're already talking to as opposed to focusing on cultivating more. Is that a fair well, thing or is that in tandem? Do we work on that? I think it's in tandem. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I think most organizations, you kind of have a general audience who is passionate about your mission. If, you know, for instance, an organization that I'm very passionate about is the Children's Heart Foundation. And, and the audience for that organization looks, you know, they, you pretty much understand who is going to be supporting that mission. And so if you understand primarily the age group, you understand um, the demographics of your audience, then you can choose a platform that they are more likely to frequent. Mm -hmm. when, when thinking about developing a strategy, should you have all of that predefined or will, will these engagements help you define that? And I guess the reason why I'm asking a, this question is that is, do you advocate that you have a strategy and you just stick to it? Or do you like review it every quarter? Like how flexible and flowing is this? I think it's, it's a living document. So okay. oh. yeah, you, you need to start with a strategy. Preferably you would start with a strategy. And then uh, I like to sit down with my clients every month, look back over uh, what worked and what doesn't work. And then you uh, will make tweaks accordingly because you're always going to have a post that bombs. It happens, but you learn from it. Yeah. And so, and then sometimes uh, I've had posts that shocked me and did amazingly well. So then we look at that and we think, well, how do we achieve that again? What was so great about that post that it resonated with our audience so much? So I think you make small tweaks every month to achieve that. But then I like to also look back quarterly and see if there's like an overarching change that needs to be made. You know, I love that because I think that a lot of times um, strategies freak people out because they end up being punitive in that you 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 achieved or you didn't, you failed or you succeeded, right? Versus thinking about it in a different way and saying, no, this is a tool that we're going to use to help us evaluate what we can do better, what we need to change. So I really like your um, approach on this. I think that's smart. You know, we don't do that enough. We don't, we don't yeah. do that enough. It's a, it's such an interesting thing. Well, let's move on to another big question that we all seem to get and we seem to kind of freak out about, and that is frequency. Talk to us about this. Help us like talk us off the ledge because this, I think makes, people want to get engaged or run the other way because they feel like they can't manage it. What do you right. think? Right. Well, so I have a couple of thoughts about this. My first um, thing I'll say is that HubSpot put out something last year that said you should post two to five times a week to grow on most platforms. But I do know that a lot of nonprofits don't have a ton of bandwidth. Yeah. Maybe they have a volunteer, maybe they have a staff member that does this and, and multiple other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's more important to choose a frequency that you can stick with in the long run, rather than saying, I'm going to post every day. And then you're just completely worn out and decide this isn't for you. I think I have a client that we post twice a week for them and it works for them. And there has been gradual growth. Obviously, the more you post, the more quickly you will grow, but it's important that you have a consistency that your audience can rely on. Mm -hmm. And also I think as important as your frequency is how of post is how much you're engaging. So if you're spending time engaging with your audience rather than just putting posts up there and then it's really a, a one-sided um, conversation, it's not really a community. So I love that you said that, and I want to ask a follow-up question to that. When you talk about that engagement piece, is it as simple as liking something, or are you saying no, dig deeper and say, yeah, we agree with this, that's why we offer this program, or talk to us about how, how deep we go with that engagement. Well, so I would recommend, and I know this might be difficult for some smaller organizations, but I recommend engaging 15 minutes, five days a week. And when you're doing that, you're going to have two types of engagement. There's inbound, which is the easy kind because it's just responding to 
likes and comments and, and direct messages. But then you're going to have outbound, which I think is the most effective tool you have to grow your audience and expand your reach. And for nonprofits, I usually recommend that they do um, that they look at hashtags that are relevant to their mission. And so if you follow those hashtags and you comment on maybe the top or the most recent post with valuable content um, comments about that show that you are passionate about your mission, that explain more maybe about your mission and your organization, and that will attract uh, followers who were not previously aware of you. Uh, and the other thing is, if there is an organization similar to your organization, and you engage and follow that organization, uh, that's a great way to get in front of an audience that's already interested in, in what you're doing. You know, when we talk about the frequency of social media, um, I love that you drilled this down to being more specific. Help me to understand, are those things that we should be tracking as well? Um, not just the, the bottom line number of people who follow us, but, but really getting a little bit more granular on this? Or do you feel like this shouldn't you know, enter into the fray when we're trying to figure all this out on our strategy? Well, so for strategy, I would say that while follower count is, mm -hmm. is a very easy way to determine how, what, how fast you're growing, it's not necessarily as important as your engagement rate, which you should be able to see in the apps analytics of the um, platform that you're using. Uh, because if you look at your reach and engagement rate, you can see how many people you're reaching that are in your current audience that are outside your current audience. So you're expanding your awareness. And then you can see based on the engagement rate, how much what you're putting out there is resonating with yeah. the people that follow you. Right. I think you're right. I mean, you said right when we started, you know, it, it, it can be a mystery. Sometimes you think, wow, this post is going to do great. And then other posts, you'll be like, what, what happened? <laughs> But I think those are the questions to ask. You know, it's it's a really interesting thing to make us better and and I think to to make the tools more effective, right? Right. If you know what works, you can do more of that. And if you know what doesn't work, you can figure out why it didn't work and and hopefully not do that again. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm dying to talk about and spend a little bit more time with you on this, Sarah, is that I mean, already the things that you've been talking about, they can seem like a heavy lift for organizations. Um, we all know nonprofits work with generally not enough staff, not enough, not enough of anything. And so then when, when we hear about these things that we should be doing, um, sometimes it just seems like it's a better thing for us to contract outside of the company uh, versus bringing somebody in. Help us to understand what this might look like. Right. So I would start off by saying definitely do your research. Look at uh, the contractor's website, their social media presence, and see if you feel like they would be a good fit for you. Uh, and then when you have that first call with them, ask them what their services include. Mm -hmm. Because there are agencies out there or contractors out there who will post for you and manage your community. And then they didn't necessarily create a strategy. So if that's the case, I would make sure that you get a strategy before just contracting someone to Smart. create content. The other thing I think is really important to ask is, are they engaging? If they are not doing your engagement, if they're just posting on your behalf, then someone from your staff will need to pick that up. That is a really big piece of this, and um, I think that gets missed. I mean, are you? Do you see that? Like everybody understands that, or or are you like me where you're saying, yeah, not enough people are having that conversation? I think not enough people are having that conversation for sure. And you know, just as someone who does engage on behalf of nonprofits, mm -hmm. I notice so many other organizations that perhaps I'm engaging on the behalf of a client, they never respond, they never like, or mm -hmm. they just kind of post it and, and leave it. But I think, you know, once you do sort of get into engagement, you'll see a lot better return on your investment. Mm -hmm. Let me follow up uh, with this with another question. And that is when you're talking about engagement in this, in this realm, 
Um, how confident are you as a contractor or should we be in general with that provider? I mean, do you see what I'm getting at? Like, is there, do you ever worry about misrepresenting something or using inf information incorrectly? Like, what does that relationship look like with, with information? That's, that's so important. Yeah. And so I think it's very important that you have great communication with the contractor. I have, I'm very lucky that I have great relationships with my clients. One of them is like family at this point. And so I feel like I just channel her voice when I'm responding. But if, if you're not having conversations regularly, they won't be able to do that. And then also you, you need to make sure that that communication is open because of the, as an outsider, they don't necessarily know all of the ongoings of your organization and, and you need to let them know what you want to promote. Right. You know, it's, it's really an interesting thing. It, it seems to me like that fits back all the way to the very start of our conversation is strategy. You know, yeah. if you don't know what you're going to be promoting or talking about, um, coordinating with an editorial calendar, you're going to be missing a lot, a lot of opportunity. Definitely. You know, how hard is that to get everybody on board with that same information and, and almost, dare I say, branding message? I mean, it's, you know, not enough nonprofits, I think, in the ones that I look at and work with, spend enough time on this. What do you see? Well, I think it's important that organizations have branding in place before they are working with specifically a social media contractor. If you're working with a, a larger marketing agency that can do all of that for you, amazing. But it's going to be difficult for someone that you're contracting to represent you if you don't have at least a one pager based on your brand. Okay, smart. So that really should be in the toolbox before you begin. Right. Yeah, I like that. I think that's, I think that's a, uh, I think that's wise um, counsel. Okay, now the the next piece of this is we we're, we understand more about what we we should be getting at. What does it look like? Help us figure out the costs because for some of us. This is a lot more involved than maybe we thought that engagement piece. I think a lot of times we think, what are we pushing out? What are we pushing out? But we forget the engagement part. What does this look like if we're going to go invest in this? So it can, it will really depend based on the person, the social media manager or strategist experience. Uh, it will depend on their cost of living. If you're hiring someone in the U S versus, outside of the US and it will definitely depend based on the services you're getting. So I recently started offering some smaller um, ticket items because I know that a lot of nonprofits are utilizing volunteers or interns for social media. Yeah. And I think that if that's the case, one thing I would say is that you should get an audit or a, a fully done for you strategy because those can start anywhere from 250 to a strategy can be anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars or more, depending on the agency you go with. But mm -hmm. if you have an audit, it can at least tweak some of the issues that may be holding you back. Yeah. And if you have a strategy, then you'll have a roadmap. And so if an intern graduates and moves away or a volunteer decides to take time off and someone else does it, you don't really have a hard, a difficult transition because there's already an existing roadmap for uh, the person who's going to take it on next. You know, I'm a big fan of audits uh, all across an organization, especially with marketing. What does that time frame look like? Like, how often should we be doing that? Just as a matter of course and understanding if we're working in the right direction. So for your, for your social media audit, I would say if you're, if you're staying on top of your strategy and you're tweaking it and as you go, then I think it, it wouldn't be too regular. I think hopefully that you're seeing the things that are not benefiting you and you're tweaking them mm -hmm. as you go a full audit. Um, it shouldn't be, you know, if you contract that out, it should be done within a week and it will really help you make some changes. I did an audit for an organization recently and within a week after uh, we had, I had sent them the audit. They had increased their in, like reach by like 80%. And that's not a lot, but it's still a lot for a week. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I think, again, it goes back to what you, you started off with in this conversation is understanding the strategy of why you're doing things. And it's more than just how many followers we have, because I think we we think that that's like the most important aspect. But that's kind of like to me, it seems like, you know, if you look at your donor base and you're like, yeah, I have 5000 donors. Well, okay, yeah, but only like less than 300 are actually donating with any certainty, right? I mean, yeah. we have to kind of put away the the glitz and the, the bright, shiny object of a number and kind of be thinking more strategically. I Definitely. Mean, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, you'll see for businesses and nonprofits, for a lot of different accounts, they may have a ton of followers, but then their engagement is so low that it's really not what I think to be the overarching goal should be for a nonprofit, which is community building. So if you've got a ton of followers, but they're not engaged, they're not truly a part of your community. Right, right. I love that. Um, you know, before we let you go, and we don't have a lot of time. Um, so many nonprofits have cyclical periods where maybe they're heavy into service or they're heavy into programming or they're heavy into fundraising or it's event season or or maybe it's um, a national moment or a national month you know dedicated to their cause or their topic um, do you ever see social media management following those those trends um, and being more active during these times or is that the wrong approach just being more consistent as you mentioned earlier well, I, I like consistency always, but I think if that opportunity to um, work within, say, uh, mental health, how, this is, you know, Mental Health Awareness Month. Right. If you're an organization like that, I think it would be a missed opportunity not to really focus on in bringing that up, bringing a more awareness to your cause and sort of, if you have the capacity, maybe increase your posts during that time. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> Pardon me. It makes a lot of sense. And I have to say, um, it keeps going back to strategy. And you know, the old fashioned word is kind of like content calendar. How often are you seeing the social media managers and that component really understanding that deeper content ca uh, calendar concept for editorial and pitches? Or are you keeping those? Are you seeing those kept separate? Uh, do you mean in terms of the calendar and how it relates to the strategy? Yeah, like so many organizations, especially if they're fortunate to have a marketing and communications department, where they seem to work really hard and be extremely vigilant about that that um, editorial calendar, right? You know, who can they pitch stories to across the general media? But it seems to me that we, we're missing the boat if we're not meshing that to our social media. Right. Well, and there should be places in your strategy that allow for things that are just happening, you know, upcoming events. And then, and that is a situation when your strategy needs to be more flexible. So there's been times when I've had a client had this like really cool opportunity to come up and we had not planned for it. So I just made some tweaks and moved the calendar around and, and you just have to kind of be willing to be flexible, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Last but not least, again, this time has flown by. How often are we, should we be working with somebody that we contract with? Or even if we have it, somebody on our team, what does that look like? I mean, with so many of our departments, like in operations or fundraising, we have those Monday meetings or the Tuesday, you know, roundups or whatever. What should this echo, uh, um, this, this space look like? And how do we echo that behavior? Well, if you are just starting to contract out with someone, I would say that there's going to need to be a lot of communication in the big beginning as they understand your goals, create your strategy, get your feedback on it, and then create your first content calendar. Mm -hmm. But I would say for me, I speak to my clients at least once a month on the phone, like on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have, I email with them regularly and we also now have a Slack channel so they can reach me via Slack. So I think it's, I just think that relationship is so important in terms of being able to achieve a success for the organization. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, now this is like a curveball, so get your mitt up because this this might be a really hard thing to answer. But you know, in the nonprofit sector, well, in business in general, we work on this growth model, like well, we need to grow, at, you know, X percent a year or a quarter, or in programming. What kind of growth is realistic? I mean, what are some of the numbers that we should set our eyes on? Well, that. Again, it just like it very much depends on the organization. So one of my clients is super niche mm -hmm. and they have probably 800 followers, but all of their followers are very specific to their very, very tiny niche mm -hmm. and they're very engaged and they've built relationships with a lot of these followers. So their yeah. growth is going to be slower because there's less of uh, an audience out there for them to even connect with. Okay. Whereas if you have, say, um, an animal rescue I mean, you have a lot bigger of a pool to grow your audience from. And so it will probably grow more quickly. Interesting. Okay. So again, that's what your provider can maybe help you with to kind of figure that out, to look at that, to kind of understand. And again, that goes back to the shiny chase of the number. You know, what's, what's going to be a good number and not just being caught up in that. Well, I've learned a tremendous amount. Um, it's been really fun. And, and I, I mentioned this to you, Sarah, that we were going to, it'll go by fast. There's so many questions that come in. And so I want to make sure that we um, give Sarah's uh, information, CEO of The Social Puzzle. You can find Sarah Suarez at thesocialpuzzle.com. Um, and there's some great information um, on that site. And, and I think that... Um, I like your measured approach. Sometimes we fall into these traps like, oh, we have to have, you know, we have to have this going as opposed to saying, wait, step back, take a deep breath. Let's figure out what's the, the best um, piece of advice. I love that you, you ended our time together with the story of the clients that only have 800 followers, but they're the right 800. Right. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what matters. Is your audience connected to your mission? Are they the, are they your community? Yeah, it's really, I think when you look at it this way, it changes the game. You know, it makes it a lot more manageable. And I also think thoughtful because then you're not just spewing out stuff that doesn't really matter, but that you take up a lot of time, you burn through money just to get stuff posted and up. But in the end of the day, it's not going to be as effective. And then therefore it becomes frustrating. So it's been, it's been really interesting to learn from you today. Again, the social puzzle. Um, hopefully if you get a chance to meet with Sarah or go to her website, you'll find that this doesn't need to be a puzzle, but it needs to be something that you work on. Again, everybody, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. The nonprofit nerd, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group, will be back with us shortly. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who allow us to have these conversations day in and day out, where we get new perspectives, we learn new things, and uh, we, we can be challenged to, to do better for our nonprofits. And those partners of ours include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Hey, Sarah, I'm going to rethink the whole thing that we're doing for our social media strategy for the Nonprofit Show. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I hope, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's all good, you know, um, because you did bring up some things. I I um, am not immune to chasing that shiny number, right? And so I like what you had to say. I really did. I've learned a lot, and it's going to help me think about how we can um, be better and do better. So thank you for joining us thank today. You. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk with you. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Hey, we end every episode of The Nonprofit Show with, I'm going to call it our mantra. And that is to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.